Hi, I'm Herb Redrick, the senior pastor here at First Missionary Baptist Church. Why do I have cross eyes? Because that's the series we're in right now. The purpose is that we want you to learn how to see everything just like Jesus saw it in your home, in your work, uh, in the community. How did Jesus see things? So join us uh, as we go through cross eyes all year long. Again, my name is Herb Redrick. Come on in and join us. Pray you enjoy the message. There's so much power in that song. When you understand what Jehovah means, it means that I am that I am. And whatever you are standing in need of, he's saying I am that that you stand in need of. And so when you know that you know, the one that you know has everything you stand in need of, then you ought to be able to praise him. Uh, you ought to be able to just thank him for waking you up this morning and, and starting you on your way. Somebody didn't get the, the call this morning. Somebody's bed became their cooling board and their sheet became their shroud. But for you and I, we were able to, to stand on our feet and, and to make our way into the house of the Lord and to just to be able to praise him just one more time. You ought to be able to sing that with some joy and some glory and some magnification that he is Lord, that Jehovah is his name. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, somebody ought to praise his holy and righteous name. Of God. Risen King. Risen King. Jehovah. Listen, Jehovah is, yes, it is your name. Hey, come on, one more time. Come on. Hallelujah. Lamb of God. Risen, Risen King. King. Jehovah. Jehovah. As we're taking the next couple of weeks to prepare ourselves for Easter, uh, Easter is the greatest day in human history. And believe it or not, uh, many people who don't usually make their way to church will be looking for a place to worship. It may be a friend, it may be a, a family member, it may be a co-worker, it may be even a neighbor. In fact, statistics show that only uh, two out of ten people actually attend worship. So all of us know some people who, who aren't worshiping. And right now, they're, they're beginning to wonder where are they going to spend their Easter weekend and, and where might they go. And for, in fact, uh, Easter weekend is the highest attendance in any church uh, day in church history. And, and that's not by accident. That's not by coincidence. It's by divine providence. There are people who are still looking for help and hope through God's word and through his people. And they're looking for a place where they can get connected to Christ and his, co and, and his community. And so I want to challenge us uh, over the next couple of weeks as, as you're out and about uh, to be able to give people a message of hope that there is a place where they can come and worship him in spirit and in truth. And I know I, know I can hear some of you right now say, well, Pastor, you don't know my friends. 
You, 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 you don't know them. You, you don't know what they do on the weekends, and you don't know where they go, and you don't know how they talk. And, and I, No, but I do know that everybody's looking for joy and peace. Now, we might be looking for it in all the wrong places, but that's what we're in search of and we're in lieu of. And, and we may think it may come through money. We may think it may come through drugs. We may think it may come through sex. We may think it may come through power. We may think it may come through our career, but we're searching for it. And, and so on that day, I want to challenge you uh, that you will reach out and just tell someone that I know a place where you can get a message of hope. In fact, uh, I want to talk to you and I want to give you a message of hope today that, that is universal in all, its, in all of its understanding. And so if you would, open your Bibles with me uh, to the book of John, uh, the, the, the 19th chapter. And while you're finding that, for those of you who are tech savvy, if you don't have your paperbacks or your hardbacks or your leatherbacks, uh, then maybe you've got your electronic devices. And I want to encourage you to go out there and, and pull down the app you uh, version it's got great devotionals on it it's got different translations where you can do group studies you can even follow one another on that it's a free app and it's, it's really a powerful app so you can do that as well and for my tech savvy and social media bus I want to encourage you to follow me on uh, Twitter my handle is at uh, Herb Redrick and uh, we keep the message going all week long. And, you know, we already like you, so if you have a Facebook account, why don't you go out to our website and click our Facebook and, and like us out there. Now, to that end, I, as I've been talking about this being the greatest day in human history, I need all of our men, anyone that's 18 years and older, to stand up. And we'll, Go ahead, stand up. Yeah. And then I want, you to, I, want to, I want to show you how much power you got. I, I know most of you got a smartphone now. I want you to just raise your smartphone. Just, just raise it up in your hands. Yeah, raise it up high. Don't be afraid. I know you got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said high, above your head, above your head. Yeah, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Now, now, now say, now, now, now say uh, this is my phone. All right, see, and I've got power. You've got power right here in your phone. Now, I just said, keep it up. Yeah, if y'all haven't been exercising, you're going to be in trouble. All right. Now, notice I said that there are thousands and millions and hundreds and thousands of people whose lives are, are hurting, and they're looking for a place uh, where they can come and worship God in spirit and in truth. And we want to create that environment here. We want to create an environment where people can come and have a great experience that they might have a God experience. And in having that God experience, they can get connected with Christ and his community. And we could possibly see lives radically change uh, for, by Christ, for Christ, both locally and globally. And you can make that happen just with this device you got in your hand. And here's what I want to challenge you to do. Right now, take that device and turn to it. Turn to it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Now take it off lock. I, yeah. Now move on over there to your text page or all of you got text. Move right on over there. I'm going to show you how much power you got. And right now, I want you to text the keyword man up to 555-888 right now because you got the power. And all we're asking you for is two to four hours, one weekend out of the year that you can help change the world right now. 555-888, the key word is man up. Man up right now. Right now. You're making an eternal difference. You can't spend a better two to four hours. And I'm getting ready to give you a message of hope that you can go out and give the rest of the world because we're living in a place where people are dying daily without knowing Christ. Amen? You may be seated. You may be seated. Now, you know I got all that on video. So I'm going to be looking for you. Two to four hours. That's all we're asking. Now, I want you to open to what I say, the book of John, chapter 19. Now, the book of John is the fourth a, a book in the New Testament. And the easy way to remember that is J-O-H-N. John has got four letters, four books. I mean, it's the fourth book in the New Testament. We're going to go to chapter 19. And uh, let's look at verses uh, 19 through 22. And I'll come from the NIV. And notice what it says here. It says, Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross 
many of the Jews no, fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the, the, for the place of Jesus, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. It, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write king of the Jews, but that he claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered them, what I have written, I have written. Notice now, <clears throat> This message here, to understand this, you really got to, if you, I got to set the stage and set the scene. You, you don't need to uh, read any of that other stuff. I mean, you, if you just read the Bible with, with a vivid imagination and just imagine this, uh, people will go to any length uh, to try to uh, uh, divert the message or the messenger of God. And the sad part about this is in this particular text, it's the religious leaders uh, who didn't want Jesus' message to be understood. And in this chapter here, uh, they have sent, sent, sentenced Jesus uh, to crucifixion. And, and here, here's the thing you have to understand. Crucifixion is a terrible thing. This is, you know, most of us, we understand that Jesus was crucified and he died and he rose from the dead. And we just, we, we just can get there very quickly. But for the next couple of weeks, I want us just to hang out with Jesus on the cross and, and, and see the humiliation that he went through and the message that was there. Uh, now, here it is now in the ancient world uh, when someone was sentenced to death. Usually, usually, uh, there was some time period between the sentencing and the execution. Are y'all walking with me that far? And, but in this particular case, because the Jews uh, wanted a rush to judgment, uh, they tried to usurp uh, the Roman system. In fact, in Rome, when someone was uh, slated to be executed, from the time of their sentencing to the time of their execution, there was usually a 10-day span. Are y'all walking with me that far? So here now, there's supposed to be 10 days from the time he's convicted to the time he's executed. And the reason for that is that while that person was in jail for 10 days, if someone could bring forth some evidence uh, that could show that that person had not committed that crime, that person could be released. Listen to this now. Now, after the 10-day period was up, uh, the next thing that they would do is that they would affix a sign over that person's head with his name and the crime that he had, had committed. And the purpose for, of that was twofold. One is to deter crime for, because if you saw someone getting killed for a crime that you were thinking about committing, you might think twice about committing that crime, right? Yeah, in fact, you know, I, I, I might have said this in Bible study or even here on the stage, in places, in, in most Arab countries, crime is very low. In fact, they can walk away and leave their buildings open and their houses open at night because if you're suspected of a crime and they catch you, they just cut your hand off. So now most of us be walking around here like this about right now, <laughs> right? You, you know, that's it. No, man, I ain't stealing no more. I ain't got but one hand left, you know. Yeah, be walking, yeah, like this. But, but here now, they would have this 10-day period, and so the next thing was to put this sign either uh, around the criminal's neck, or they would have the officer uh, hold it in front of them, or they would affix it to the cross as they parade them around the streets. And so as they're going through the streets, people there are able to see the sign, and they're able to see the crime, and if they know of any reason uh, that that person shouldn't be crucified, they're to speak up then so that the execution will stop, and they would take them back, and they would retry that person, and if, he, if it was found to be free, he would be released. Least. Now, here's the, here's the thing. When you look at the, the life of Jesus here, the Jews had gone to Pilate just that night before, and they had taken him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. They had bared false witnesses, and they had done all of these things overnight. And they went early that morning, and they went to Pilate, wouldn't even go into his house or into his chamber.
chambers because they didn't want to defile themselves. Now, watch how hypocritical these individuals were because they had Passover to go to that night, and so they didn't want to become unclean. So here they are. Now, we need to get this deed done, this dirty deed done before we go to church. Uh, are y'all Are y'all yeah, Come on now. Yeah, this, are y'all, this, this, this is what had to happen. And so here he is now. Here he is. Uh, they had gone to Pilate, and they had convinced Pilate uh, that Jesus had said that he was a king. And now, you need to read chapter 18 for some of this. And Jesus had had this one-on-one -on -one conversation with Pilate, and Pilate asked him if he was a king, and Jesus asked him, well, where'd you get that information? And then Pilate said, where am I, a Jew? And then he says, where are you, a king? And Jesus says, it is as you have said. And he says, but my kingdom is not of this world. And so Pilate couldn't really find anything wrong with him, but the Jews kept saying that if you don't crucify him, we're going to tell Caesar uh, that you are friends of, of a criminal. And so here's Pilate now. He's in a predicament to save his own skin. He now has to come up with a scheme. And so now he says, I know what, I'll give them a choice between Barabbas and Jesus. Y'all seen it here with you. Barabbas, Barabbas. Well, see, here's the thing. It was the day of Barabbas' execution. He's a criminal. His 10 days are up. Are y'all watching this now? And so since his 10 days are up, he, Pilate knows that he's got a choice. They can either choose Barabbas, whose 10 days are up, and he said, I can crucify him if you're just looking for a crucifixion, or we can take Jesus. And by their taking Jesus, what he is doing is substituting Jesus' uh, uh, time for Pilate's time. And so in other words, because, uh, I mean, not Pilate, Barabbas, because Barabbas has already done his 10 days, they could now speed up the execution. Are y'all walking with me that far? So here's the stage now. So here Jesus now uh, is on the cross, and so he's been crucified. And notice now what it says. So here we are at our lesson text. It says, and Pilate had a notice, listen to it, prepared and fastened on the cross. And he had it to read that Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, this message that he had written uh, wasn't even a message that would, would uh, of a crime. It was, it was actually, it wasn't an accusation. It's actually a proclamation. And, and this is where the trouble comes in. So now here's, here's, here's Pilate now. He, he's, he's put out this edict, and he's, he's put this on Jesus's uh, uh, cross, and they have paraded him through the town, and everyone has seen this. No one has spoken up, and now he sees Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now, you can find that phrase or a part of it in all the four Gospels, and that would be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But they're all worded a little different, but all of them contain one phrase, and that is Jesus, King of the Jews, or the King of the Jews. That phrase is, is, is consistent throughout. And so now watch this here now. So here he is. They've got him on the cross. And it says now, watch this, that there were many people who saw this, many Jews who saw this sign. Now, uh, this, uh, life hasn't changed much, but we're some sad and sadistic people. We like seeing people in pain and punish and things of that nature. You know, in fact, we even laugh at some of it sometimes. It, it, and some of us can become numb to all the evil things that we see on the news. In fact, even news reporters, you know, they'll tell you a gruesome story and it'll be very uh, horrific. And then they'll say, now for a great news of the day. Right? They are and so we become numb to it. But in that day, it was a sport. And so people would go out and watch the executions. But now I want you to just take a look at the sign here. It says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This, this was a powerful phrase. And it was, it was written in three languages. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let's just talk about what that phrase meant and why it was caused so much trouble and why it's a message of hope. So if you want to go out and tell someone, I can tell you why you need to go to church. And you say, why? Because Jesus of Nazareth is king of the Jews. I know you're not going to do that, but let me just help you anyway. But so, right, so the name Jesus, 
It, it, it means Savior. In fact, I believe it's in Matthew, uh, the first chapter, verse 21, 22, 23, somewhere in there where Jesus, where the angel told Joseph uh, to give uh, the baby this name when he told the uh, Joseph to take Mary as his wife. And he's saying here now, take her as your wife and give him this name, Jesus. And I'm going to talk about this later, but Jesus is a Greek name. But in the Hebrew, that name would have been Jehoshua, which some of us would say Joshua. And the word means Jehovah saves, just what we we're talking about, means Jehovah delivers you, means Jehovah takes you away from those things that, that could take you down. And so he's, he, what Pilate is saying is that you're your Savior, this man that I've crucified, he is Jehovah saved. Now, look what it says next. Jesus of Nazareth. Now, that may not seem like a whole lot to us, but in, in, in the ancient world, you were known by your name and your city. And, and because they didn't want to confuse him with Jesus of Concord or, or Jesus of Charlotte or, or Jesus of Kannapolis, you know, because we do. You see, Jesus was a common name. It, it wasn't like it was some uh, very special name at that time because the Hebrews would have named their sons Joshua or, or Jehoshua. And, and so a uh, being of Nazareth, though, helped fulfill prophecy. Now, the word Nazareth is not found in, in the Old Testament, but the place of Nazareth or the type of place that Jesus would come from, meaning a lowly place, one who didn't have any kind of uh, historical importance, a, a, a nobody. Nazareth would have been a place of a nobody. And so when you read like the book of Isaiah, it talks about that he, 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 he came from this, this despised place and he didn't come from a place that people would recognize. You know, when people are prominent, we like to make where they're from prominent. I'm from Charlotte. I'm from Chicago. I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm, I'm from New York. Where are my New Yorkers in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, here's one, here's one. I'm from Jersey. You know, you, you, ever, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I say? I don't ever say New Jersey. Do this. I'm from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that not what they right? Yeah. So they make it sound all important. But how many folks say, I'm from Concord? No, you don't say that. <laughs> you, you, we don't say that, do we? We, we say, I'm from Charlotte, you know, a little place outside of Charlotte. Or, right? Yeah. I, I met this guy, I forgot where it was from, so he says, Raleigh. I say, okay, I got that, right? I mean, it was some small place that I, and I hadn't heard of, it, and, but, but that's, that's how people are. And so Pilate wanted them to understand specifically that this was the person that they've been dealing with all of these last three years. And then he goes on and he says, king of the Jews. Now, this really had to, had, had to rivet right through them because to say that he's king of the Jews uh, is saying something because one thing, there was supposed to already be a king, and that would have been Herod. And so if he's saying that, wait a minute, Herod's not king. If he's king of the Jews, he is the king of the Jews. And I think that's how it reads in most of your Bibles, the king of the Jews, meaning that he's the one that God had sent into the world to save the world. Are y'all walking with me here now? And so what he's saying is that this is a message of hope, uh, that this is the one, uh, this is the one that the scriptures had proclaimed uh, that would come and that he would save the entire world. Mm, 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 mm. So this, this kingdom that, that, that the Jews were concerned about, uh, Jesus had already told Pilate that his kingdom was not of this world. Why? Because most of our problems end with the government. Most of our problems are with ourselves or the forces that are outside of us with sickness, disease, with rape, with murder, with incest, with all of those kind of horrific crimes. And who is the king of those or the prince of those things? It is Satan. And so Jesus came first to break the powers of another world, of, of the world of darkness, of rulers and, and authorities and powers in dark places. And, and that's what most of us need, that message of hope. We know that there, there's got to be somebody that can come deliver me from this depression, from these drugs, from, from these bad relationships. There's got to be someone that can deliver my body from pain and sickness. There's got to be someone that can help my mind, that can give me a peace which surpasses all understanding 
and there's got to be someone who can help me work through all of my problems and my concerns. There's got to be a message of hope. And he's saying here that Jesus' kingdom, uh, here's your first cross-eyed perspective, that Jesus' kingdom uh, surpasses all the kingdoms of the world, that Jesus has a kingdom that far passes uh, Caesar and far passes Egypt and any other world power to know he's the king of the Jews. Hmm. But notice now, notice, notice, it said that many of the Jews saw this sign and read this sign and because where he was crucified uh, was near the city and the city they're talking about is Jerusalem and because of crucifixions, they were mostly done on the outskirts of the city, and they were done for several reasons that way, so that people coming in the city, if they had bad intentions on their mind, they would know right as they were coming in, well, you know, if you come in here, bro, this could be you next week. Are you, are you walking? Just think if they're outside the city, you're coming out by the racetrack. You're coming in the Concord, and you got folks out there like this. Birds eating out their eyes, and skulls, and stuff. And you were coming in town thinking about you going to hurt somebody. You might say, well, you know what, bread ain't worth all that. Let's, 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 just, go, let's, just, let's just go on. Let's, let's just go on back. C come on now. We, we, right? You, you would change your mind. You would change your mind. And, and so this is one of the reasons it was on the outskirts. And by being out there, though, people would come out there not only to see the people suffer, but if it was someone who had done you wrong, you want to make certain that they're dead. Or the other reason they would come was to hurl insults to them. And they even did that to Jesus. If you can save yourself, you save others. Why don't you come on down from that cross? Ha, 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 ha. Here's a man dying. And all we could do is mock him. And so they were out there, and it noticed what it says. It says it was written in three languages. What was the significance of this? Where the Roman Empire was a trilingual kind of community. Uh, it, it had different languages for different reasons. And, and, and to write it in Aramaic and Latin and, and Greek, uh, th this was a profound significance here. And this is why it's a message of hope for the entire world. Look, look at this now. If it was written in Aramaic, that was the native tongue of the Hebrews. It, some of your Bibles might even say it was written in Hebrew. And, and, and so they would have understood it in their vernacular. So when people would come by, it, you know, here again, if you saw a sign and, and you were... Like, say, you go to Mexico or you go to uh, Walmart, you see signs that are written in different languages, right? And you don't know what it says. If it doesn't have a restroom one over the top of it, you might think that's where the fruit section is and go in there and, right? Yeah, if you don't understand that language. And so here it is. It's got the different languages there. And so it's in Hebrew. And so the language of Hebrew represents moral law and the love of God and the law of God. And it was the people's language for the Jews. And so the Jews would have understood what the message was. But then when they wrote it in Latin, it was so that was the language of the Roman government. And so if you were a Roman citizen, you spoke Latin. You didn't speak Hebrew. So if it was just in Hebrew, you wouldn't know what the sign said. And for the Latin, uh, it, it represented the law of government, civil government and law. And so what he's saying here now, that this Jesus is king of kings over the God's law and God's love. He's also king of kings over civil law and civil government. Sometimes we don't think we as Christians ought to get in the political arena, but the opposite is true. We ought to be salt and light everywhere we go because we need to be able to speak what? Power to evil. And so here he is, he's saying here that he's king over that as well. And then the last language was Greek. And the, in, the, in the Bible, the New Testament was written in Greek because in that day, that was the common language for most of the world. So most people at least spoke two languages. They would have sp spoken their native tongue and Greek. And so when you hear, when you, we talk about koinonia, that means the common language, a common fellowship with one another. And the, it was written in what they call koinonia Greek. And it would have said that this is for all the science and, and the philosophy and all the business 
people in the world. So in the marketplace, when you would go to the stores, it was written in that language. And so what is he saying? That this message that was over the cross was written for the entire world, that it penetrated all the barriers, that there's not a person out there, not a friend, not a neighbor, not a co-worker that doesn't fall into one of those three categories. They may be looking for everything they need in the marketplace. Well, guess what? Jesus is king of kings. They may be looking for it in government and, and in politics. Well, guess what they're saying? That Jesus is Alpha and Omega. They may be looking at it in other religions, and they're falling down the false gods, and he said, no, that he is the king of the Jews, that he is the beginning and the end. He is Lord of lords and king of kings. This is the message that you can go out and you can take people. So let me give you your second cross-eyed uh, perspective there. So the second thing that you have to understand is that the cross penetrates, all right, all cultural barriers. The message of the cross penetrates all culture barriers. So, so when you're going out, as I just said, there are people looking to hear the message of hope. You don't have to sit there and wonder, well, I don't know if they'll receive it because, you know, they're from a different culture or they, they have different agendas. Guess what? That, that message that Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, you now know that it was written in three languages, which means it was to penetrate anyone's uh, perception and anyone's desires and anyone's motives because all of our motives fall into one of those three buckets. So whatever a person is looking for, he says, Jesus can be that for you. Are you seeing that? But notice now how the text takes a turn. You have the Jews that just going out there to, to take a look at it, but on their way uh, to just make certain that Jesus was dead, the chief priests, they went out to the cross uh, to make certain that Jesus was dead. In fact, they hurled insults at him, but when they looked up, they saw this message that said, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. They took off and ran to Pilate's place again, and they called Pilate out. And look what it says. I believe it says, and the chief priest uh, of the Jews, right, protested to Pilate. Now, that word protest doesn't mean they said it one time. The form that it is in, they kept badgering him. You need to change this. Do not write. Do not write that he's king of the Jews. We need you to change this. They badgered him and badgered him and badgered him because they wanted him to change the message from he was, he was the king of the Jews to he claimed to be king of the Jews. In other words, notice they didn't ask him to take the sign down because they knew he wouldn't take it down, but they wanted him to change it. But now here's what we don't understand. Whatever Pilate wrote was law. So what they're asking him is to change the law, to fit me. Anybody want some laws changed to fit them? Come on now, let's tell the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah. If you if you could go in there and write a law, you'll write one to fit your situation and your circumstance to fit you. And so, but here now, here's a man that was weak. Uh, had, had no spine uh, just hours ago uh, when he allowed Jesus to be crucified. Notice what it says next. It says, Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. In other words, he's saying, what law I have put down, I have put down, and nobody can change it, and I'm not changing it for you or for anyone. Isn't it just amazing how some things we're firm on and other things we're weak on? We're weak on, we're firm on the things that are unimportant, and we're weak on the things that are important. Here when Jesus' life was in in the balance. He had no backbone. And here they're over here fussing over what's written on a sign, and they were willing to leave the sign the way it was and fuss over a sign. Now, he, are we sometimes like that? We major in the minors and minor in the majors. Things that we should really be fighting for, we don't. And the things we fight for doesn't matter in the end. This is why people are looking for a message of hope. They need to know that there's some place that they can go out and they can get a message of hope. And, and we've got it, you all. There's no better message in the whole entire world. Why do you think people are going to be looking for a place to go in the next couple of weeks? You just watch. They're going to be, they're going to just look at you on tomorrow at work. And you're going to say, I got a message of hope for you. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, if you don't know what that means, just go out to this link. Now, you ought to be able to tell them. You, you say, pull out your notes and say, let me just tell you. Oh, oh I didn't write it all down. But you, Are y'all walking with me? 
We've studied eight weeks about the character of God. We can see him in his fullness right here and, and with Jesus being on the cross. And that we need to spend some time there. That's why we've been asking you to make some sacrifices for him. Because when you look at the sacrifice that he made for you and for me, what's two hours? What's a few dollars for us to be able to create a community and a campus where people who are dying daily looking for a message of hope? And we have it right here. We have the only message that matters. The only message. The only message. And so we have to learn that we have to stand firm for the truth, even in difficult situations. We have to learn that we have to not have a weak backbone when it comes to standing for the truth. When it comes to sharing the truth, we have to be able to share it in love, but we should share it. So I want to encourage you over the next couple of weeks that you would be willing to give someone a message of hope. And that you would tell them that you know a place that they can come and celebrate the Lord. Because it's our duty. Listen, it's our duty. Here's your last cross-eyed perspective. It's our duty to defend the truth, even under pressure, even under pressure. That's our responsibility. Even Pilate defended truth when he didn't even know what it was. He, the message he wrote was so truthful, he didn't understand the power of it. But the reason, you know why Pilate really rejected the, the Jews' request? Because he wanted to get back at them for putting him in a bad situation. They've made him look bad. He wanted to make them look bad. But you know we study for eight weeks the providence of God and the power of God and the plan of God. It all works together for good. Do you see that? Here people were all fighting for their own personal agenda and God used all of it for us to sit here today to be able to have a message of hope for the hopeless. So why don't you go out and tell someone this week that I know of a place. And so here's your challenge on your way out. Uh, go ahead on and let's stand on your feet. Our first impression team is going to give you just one card. I'm going to give you a bigger challenge. And I, wanna, and I really want to encourage you all uh, to, to follow me on Twitter because I'm going to be putting some messages, some video messages out there this week. But just take this one card and give it to one person. Just one person. Just one person. That you have a burning heart for, that you know that they aren't where they need to be, but they're looking. Because here's what I want you to remember. If you don't remember anything else about the message today, here's your bottom line. Regardless of who you run into, the message of the cross is a universal message for our universal needs. It's a universal message for our universal needs. So whatever it is someone needs, you don't have to feel that you're inadequate. You don't have to feel that you got to have all the answers. What you can say with confidence, with assurance, that Jesus is the answer. I don't know how he's going to work it out for you. That's what you can tell him. I, I don't know how. But you can just tell him what he's done for you. You can just tell him how he has spared you. I, I know some of us in here are going through some things right now. You say, well, Pastor, I haven't been spared yet. Yes, you have. Because if you're in Christ, y'all remember on last week, if you're in Christ, if you're in Christ, you got access to everything that God has. And, and whether he delivers you on this side, all he may want you to do right now is to walk by faith. You can say, I don't know how my situation's going to turn out, but I do know. I do know that he will deliver me, whether on this side or the other side, that I've got a place where the wicked will cease from troubling. i got a place 
where the weary can be at rest. I got a place where there be no more sickness. I got a place where there be no more dying. I got a place where he's going to wipe away. I know some of you are crying over circumstances and situations in your life, but Jesus just said, God said that I'm going to wipe away every tear, every tear that you got, every pain that you got, every suffering that you're going through, everything that you've been dealing with, that you, even though you may not be delivered on this side, there is a place. And sometimes that's all that you have to hold on to. But you know what? The people in the world that don't have Christ, they don't have that to hold on to. They don't have an eternal state of joy and peace and love to hold on to. All they have is what they have. But we've got a message of hope for the hopeless. We can connect them to Christ and his community. And their lives can be radically changed. Their souls can be radically changed by Christ for Christ. You've got the power to do that just with that card, just by handing it to someone. And when you hand it to them, just go ahead and say, Lord, I give this to them in faith. I give it to them in faith. Pray to who you want to have this card and, and, and give it to them and know that there's a message of hope for them. A message of hope. Jesus is the answer. Bow your heads with me. Now. I hope you enjoyed the message today. And just as we promised you earlier, I hope that it was allowed you to get connected to Christ and his community, where you can be rad radically changed for Christ by Christ. Now, we would like for you to stay in touch with us, so please uh, follow the web address on the bottom of the screen here. Go out to our website so you can connect more with us. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like what we're doing at first, uh, support us financially. And you can also do that by hitting our giving link. We thank you so very much. And again, I'm Herb Redrick, Senior Pastor at First Missionary Baptist Church. When you're in the area, stop by and see us. Bye-bye.